acquisition and a combination of new knowledge. Absolutely. So if you have a set of keywords and you want to know how many of them your students can use correctly, ask them to build a concept map. And my personal thing, what I do is I do a lot of Venn diagrams, T-charts, um, you know, three um, column charts where I make them say, you know, these belong together, these are very different, uh, compare and contrast, or actually build a real simple concept map. And they don't even have to have the sentence between it, but I tell them it has to read as a sentence. You can't, you got to go through the bubbles, and if it doesn't make a true sentence statement, then it's wrong. Okay? And you guys use concept <coughs> maps in your class. Yeah? Mind maps, concept maps. We're going to see there's lots of terms for them in a minute. All right, next one. A study by Solomon in 1986 and motivation shows that active involvement of learners enhances their understanding of new situations. Okay, so motivating. Students really get involved in doing something like this. Now, it's intimidating at first. The first activity that I have the students do is sort cards where I've already put all the words, and they have two choices. Either it's all living things or it's some living things. And I don't answer questions on any of the vocabulary for the first five minutes. And I tell them, if you don't know the word, put it in the middle. If you think you know where it goes, put it off to the side. When you think you've got everything sorted, call me and I'll come tell you if you are there. And so I go over, I have three rounds, and I go, you've got some wrong. We're, we're focused on the all living things, and you've got some wrong over there. And then I give each table a chance to ask me a question about a word that they're unsure of as a group. And we talk about the vocabulary, get them more confident on the vocabulary, and then they start going, okay. Then the next thing I do is I give them a number clue. You should have nine cards in that section. And so they know now what their goal is. And then, oh, okay, we got nine cards. I'll go over there and I'll look through them and, no, you got two that are wrong, but I won't tell them which two. Because it's the conversation that's driving the learning. Okay, good. Y'all still got another question over there? Mm -hmm. Good, too. All right. One method that teachers can use to help them break down the text and explicitly teach their students the skills required to make sense of the text is identifying juicy segments and then using a graphic organizer to help students readily see the textual inferences in the text. In doing so, teachers can not only support students' understanding of the unmarked relations within the text, but also explicitly draw attention to the big ideas of science that these texts discuss, albeit ineffectively sometimes. Okay, this is right on what you were talking with reading. It's just they use a little more complex language. And they call a juicy segment a segment that is really hard to wrap your head around. It's juicy because it's, we don't, we're not really sure, you know. And so in that article it talks about helping them set up words that if you see this in the sentence, it's t talking about comparison. If you see this in the sentence, it's talking about description. And you actually use the organizers for them to put these words and to look for that within the text. And then it talks about the, how powerful this is for second language learners. Because think, a second language learner is being asked to communicate verbally, to read in, a, in another language and communicate verbally in another language, then wrap their head around science, which is the purpose of the class anyway, because they're all struggling with the science. And to do those three tasks at the same time that your native language speakers are not having to deal with. And the one article on the iPod is a really powerful article. It talks about them getting to use where they get to see visuals if they need to so that while they may not be able to be part of the conversation, they're still observing and looking at the visual thing. It was a really interesting article. Um, I had, there were some things I would have taken to task with most of the articles. Uh, some of them were real small, and it was obviously beginner researchers, and they were... But they were, you could tell in the tone of the article, they were looking for a way to help their students. And you got to give it to them for that. Okay? Y'all have one more question? One more. Comparison is just one of the types of logical relations that can be established between textual segments. Although there are several ways to classify the logical links between textual segments, linguists agree that in general terms, these relationships can be categorized by four types of semantic categories. Elaborative, elaborative, comparison, cause and effect, and temporal. This is by Fraser in 2006. Okay, and see, and that goes back again to that reading. Reading a science text is not easy, okay? 
and temporal. You know, I, I have to learn that. That's one of the words that we have right off the bat. What's temporal, guys? And they're like, uh, is that something that's on shrimp and you fry it? Well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and we no, that's t you know time, temporary. The word you become temporary, and then they are like, oh, okay. But if they don't, ha if they've never had those exposures to those words, which a lot of students have not. Mm -hmm. Um, then you, you've got you've got to add that to their vocabulary before they can then use it as a science word. And I to constantly work on trying to give them real world examples of words they would know. Mm -hmm. You know what's a template? And out and I always say if we're outside my classroom, what would this word mean? If we're inside this classroom now, what does it mean? Because organic is two very different things. Mm -hmm. And so you've got That's to true. semantics words mm -hmm. with multiple meanings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. There you go. So reading, that was a really powerful thing that you did yesterday with reading. All right, y'all got one more over here. Yeah. My concern has been that the students' mind maps tend to lack depth in terms of levels of information. They are illogical links and unclear relationships among details. There's often duplication or overlap of categories. The names of categories differ, but they should be included, they should be included one category, such as education and schooling, and there is often no clear visual separation of details in two adjoining categories, making it difficult to establish where a point belongs. Okay, so do students know how to do this right from the start? No. No, you got to do a lot of modeling. You really got to help them understand what it is that they're doing, where are the errors. You've got to let them be okay with failing to begin with. To get better at it and um, in that article he talked about um, that he really felt like that he he tried to push them on it too fast that he he had worked really hard to figure out how to use them been there done that and so then when he started talking it was like surely y'all all get this and after they said don't call me Shirley they said yeah no we don't and so you know you have to you, you've got to really realize that they're coming from different strengths and weaknesses some students, if they've been exposed to them in high school, they may get it right off the bat. Some students are not. You know, they, in, in, at my level, I get, I've got a huge range of grades and of different ages, and so I've got some that are just, you know, their strengths and weaknesses. And again, that goes back to team building and how we establish our teams and trying to get students to work together to do that, okay? All right, so research, very powerful out there. It says this stuff works. It says there's a lot of things out there that are different ones, and there's a lot of different ways you can do it. Okay? All right, what was our second thing that we did, our second puzzle we saw? The icon. Okay? So we had, uh, again, this is a type of advanced organizer. So hold y'all's up so they can see it over there. Okay? The picture part. Okay? All right. Show them what that is. So let's see if y'all can figure that out. What is that? It's something pair, think, pair, share. Think, think pair, share. Think, pair, share. And on the back of that, he gave an example of a, a type of activity. What's this, guys, over there? Rings. Quantum brainstorming, silent brainstorming. Silent yeah, silent silent brainstorming. What's this? Sheep. Pig. That's a pig. <laughs> Pig. What's on the pig's face? Snow. Or muddy point. Muddy point. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. All right. What's this one? Clock. Clock. Clock tower. Oh, it, 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 oh um, appointment buddies. Nope. Good guess. Buddies. What is the thing on the bottom? What is on the paper, bottom? Paper. A stack of paper. Stack oh. of paper. Oh. Real, like, extreme. More focus on the clock. It's not just a clock, it's got more information in the clock. Uh, Half stack? 11, 59. <laughs> oh, they're getting closer to something now. Before noon. <laughs> is there a morning thing paper? In, huh? Morning paper? Getting closer. What is that? Oh, you're right, yeah. Before midnight. No, you're, don't focus on the actual time. Think about how the clock is telling other ways of telling you time. What's left in the day? Afternoon. Night. Well, no, what's left in the day according to this clock? Huh? Minutes. A 
Okay. Five hours. Deadlines? Five o'clock. Ding, 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 ding. End of next part. What did you say? One minute paper. Oh, 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 one minute paper. Oh, 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 deadlines, I got it. That's okay. So what is at the end of the day? And, and the thing is, is that I came up with these. You know, made sense to me. You can challenge your students. Come up with an iconic thing that represents. Because these are visual representations. And then you also had an activity that went with it. All right, what was the third thing that you saw? The math. Oh, yeah, the math. Okay, so the math and find the green one. The green paper that you did. Those were both actual things that I do with the kids in the Ninja. We're, when uh, I go and work with them, their worst scores on the test were force and motion. And um, so we talked about, so those were different things they had to add so, do math. So was the one with the door halfway open meant to be a pull, pull. or a push? Well, because it could be. Because could you be don't usually pull with your hand Certainly. on the door. It, 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 it's ambiguous, that's true. But that's I figured right. since the door is swinging in. That's why, that's why we, you know, you called up to us. What would be helpful <laughs> is if if the little there action marks had an arrow indicating yes. which No, way. that would be too easy. So you had to use the contextual. The door is opening. She has the doorknob in her hand. Mm -hmm. To get a door open and you're using the doorknob, you usually pull. Mm -hmm. If they were going through the door, they probably you don't have to necessarily push. Well, that other hand is a little distracting. distracting. Okay. Yeah, but I'm tell you tell you what, it doesn't distract the little kids as much as it, is it distracted y'all because you have more knowledge and you're trying to overthink it. Okay. Kids immediately go, that, they're pulling the door. They're pulling the rope. What they have trouble with is the piece of paper. Okay, Because what's happening... They drop it. Yeah, they drop it, but what's the force? Oh, push. push. Who, what's making it fall? Gravity. And what's uh, gravity doing? Oh, 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 oh. I guess we missed two. We probably missed two. We got two switched and we got, got one. Two switched. <laughs> 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 That's funny. <laughs> gravity falls on a piece of paper. Which I don't think we missed. You. Door. Oh, All right. Door. Okay, let me refocus. If you can hear my voice, raise your hand. Thank you. It's supposed to be. Okay. So. The, the deal is, is that, uh, yeah, y'all get all into this, is that that's real world application to either a breakout box or you've got a visual where you're trying to put words with a picture. Again, visual is, that that is an actual type of advanced organizer. The other one over here, not so much with the math, although the bag represents, and there's a little story that can go along with that about pirate's treasure and how many coins they've got. And they've got to, you know, get them off the boat before the boat sinks. And which ones do you want to get first that would have the most coins in it because it had the most mass? So there's some fun stuff you can play with that. All right, then what was the next one? Compass. The compass yes. point. Yes. Now, really, this was, now this was a bad assumption on my part because in my backpack I have all the handouts that y'all have given us since the day one. And I assumed all of you were throwing your stuff in your backpack and that you would have that handout, that you would immediately go to it, and then you would be able to figure out the little terms. Bad on my part. And, that's, and that can happen. And so we have to think ahead. Don't assume anything. And maybe what I should have done was gone ahead and given you. I found the handout that you put out in class, Jen, because I thought this was such a cool activity that we didn't get to spend much time with. But I thought it would be enough to remind you and... You had to use the north, south, east, west mm -hmm. by figuring out personalities. Hard, was hard. Yeah, yeah, didn't read we didn't read the last yeah. sentence that said a point may be used once, more yeah. than once, uh, or not at all. Well, there so you go. So we were trying to think. Oh, we, we wanted one to one. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Ours so. was operator error. <laughs> yeah, we now, Finn, it he's still practicing. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because until Last just then. <laughs> no, I didn't have a problem with that one. I just had a problem with, we like, had, it we wouldn't pull. Right code from the very beginning. We had, and then we, and then we changed it. I don't think it was pushing like, it far enough to the oh, side. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, but the, the point of that is, is okay, teacher, 
You got to think about what resources that you've got to make sure are there. You've got to think about that that's, they're doing something new. Um, I don't even do the directional with the elementary school kids. Yeah, dexterity. Yeah, the dexterity. Yeah. That becomes, it's hard enough to get them to do the little numbers and line them up. Like These are They got small fingers, though. All right, good. Okay, I'm glad you enjoyed it. All right, then what was the last one? So we got five minutes to wrap up. Uh, what did I do at the end? Huh? Oh, geez. APA. 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 So I threw that in for Dr. Brown. Although Dr. Brown has now said, Dr. Brown, tell them what you found out. <laughs> There's just two of those that have errors. Which There's actually another one that has error. But y'all hit the first one first. And so you immediately said, oh, this is wrong. And you came up, which is smart. But there's another one. Yeah. He's wrong. In a couple of ways. So we thought okay. we got to see you figure out what You got the wrong one. All right. So. Let's just wrap up here, okay? Advanced organizers can introduce a new topic or they can be a task planner. You can think of a daily calendar. Hold on, I've lost some people. You can think of a daily calendar, actually, as an advanced organizer. So they have goals, and you want to think about what those goals are and help get your students through them. Okay, so sequential or big overview, big picture. Um, a teacher's background discussion before introducing a topic can be that, a list of tasks that you want the learner to use. You can use it as a way for them to stay on point and you can have them build it. Eventually you want to get it to where they're doing the work. You've got to do some work up front to get them started doing it and showing them. Uh, but it can be words, it can be spoken, diagrams, charts, photographs, models. You could do this about a DNA model and then have them build an uh, organizer. I had mine build puzzles. And that's the one where I took Christy's idea, and instead of me telling them what to do, they had to come up with the questions from their homework that they needed to know about. And all I did was tell them how the puzzle pieces fit together, and then here's what you had to have at the end. And so that turned out really cool. Um, guys, we use this all the time. We don't even realize the diagrams that tell you how to assemble something are advanced organizers, a map. Is it, it tells you how to get from point A to point B. Um, and a visual map can also be used in a story. How are we sequencing the events in a story? And I know that's some of y'all's teaks on getting the sequence in there. They are often called semantic maps or concept maps. Um, structured tools can be written outlines, checklists, day planners. Just about anything, really, you can figure out how to call it an advanced <laughs> organizer if you want to. I still want to use it to organize them. Yeah. And these are my references. Are there any questions? Okay, well then I, I am out of time, but I will. I do want to tell you something about the boxes, though, okay? So last summer I taught at the prison, and um, I've done a couple of things. Our Lee College has a uh, Huntsville campus where we work with inmates. We, uh, well, they're not called inmates. They're called, um, I'll have to remember my proper language. It'll come to me. Offenders. Offenders program. Uncle Sam. <laughs> yes, Uncle Sam. <laughs> no. Offenders program, and it's a very competitive, and the students have to come up with money to pay for it. They've just now been offered, Lee College is one of the few colleges in the nation that's been offered an opportunity to test, try Pell Grants. Um, these students have to have, I mean, they have to have earned so many good hours of being, um, you know, having behaved. They have to be. X amount of close to their release. Um, if they take if they take out loans, they have to you know not default on their loans. It's a very competitive program, but we do do some work with them. And I went up and taught zoology up there. But before I did that, um, I found this little thing on Instructables where you put your phone on it and you enlarge and you can put some underneath it and you can enlarge it and take pictures. And I was like, oh, I gotta have some of those. And I was like, oh, but I need a whole bunch of them. And I knew I could build it. But I knew I couldn't build enough of them. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh wait, I know where we have a bunch of guys that build stuff all day. And they'll do it for really, really cheap. And so I called the dean and I said, Dean Zuniga, would you guys be interested? Oh, we would love to do that. And we made a big deal out of it. So then when I saw this, when I left, and after Andrew did his, I left, I went and I said, Dean Zuniga, I got a new deal for you. And I said, and I want to make sure that everybody gets credit that needs to get credit. So if you look on there, you'll see the logos that are on there. 
the, is where the LSU uh, the Ellis unit is where they did the actual work. Our um, offenders program was celebrating 50 years. I am the science ninja. The breakout box EDU asks that you can use any of this and do whatever you want, but they want you to give them credit. So we gave them credit, and then I gave Lee College credit for that. And those were built. Um, and then I had to get a grant to buy the blocks. That's your that's your investment. Now, if you go to breakout uh, dot if you go to breakoutedu.com, they now have entire kits that you can order that come with the locks and everything. Or you can try to figure it out yeah. and um, come at it a little bit cheaper. And and if you've got a group that you know, if you've got a shop class and you want to do something with your shop class on campus, there's lots of different ways that you can come in and find resources to do that. The locks are expensive though. The locks are expensive. They they get cheaper the more you buy them in bulk. Oh, that's good. Yeah, and so that does get to be a little bit better if you go to Amazon and you're buying a bunch. But don't go for the cheap ones, okay? That's the first deal. I was like, oh, I'm going to save money and go for these really. And if they're rinky-dink, they will fall apart. They were, the first one they got with the little dials, oh, man, 10 for $10. Yeah, that's one. And I've got 40 of them. And they're so little, you can't hardly move the little dials. And then they get jammed and stuck. And So go ahead and, and, and invest in the locks because if you're going to use this, and you can and you could share this in a group and take turns doing it. What's this called again? That's a hasp. Hasp. A hasp. Good and enough. that yeah, if you go to the um, and they actually have lockout boxes that they use in industry. And so what they do is is if they've got their electrical resource box and the fuse box and they don't want anybody to break into That's it. That's what I was thinking. There's multiple locks that a, an employee has to be able to have all five of those locks. Wow. So that nobody breaks in and shuts the power off to the plant. And those are called lockout boxes, and that's called a lockout hasp. And there's different ones of those. Well, that's pretty cool. Keep yeah, question, do you have any idea how much one box would cost? When I first started doing this with all the locks, what they had on thing was it was I think they were eighty dollars with what they were Man, asking, and I think it may have gone up to. Because yeah. they build the boxes there on their own. Now, Andrew bought one of the boxes, and he, and he immediately called him back and said, uh, guys, this isn't working, because the lid came off because of the, they were using nails and not screws. Um, but they were doing it out of the garage. I mean, they've got a really cool story. This is a teacher who was teaching, and he wanted to have a way, he knew that he would get in trouble if he locked his students in class. <laughs> so he locked something up, and, and the stuff that's on there is phenomenal. There are people with lockers. They have multiple things around the rooms the kids have to break into. There are ones you can use that are already built, and they'll give you all the information, but you have to pay a small fee. But there's ones you can watch to get your own brainstorm going on what you want to do. And seriously, guys, you know, I mean, this was pretty quick throwdown, but I've done a few. And the more you do, the better, more comfortable you get. But the minute Dr. Brown said, I want to see what that is, and I found out I was doing advanced organizers, I thought, well, okay, I can probably throw this together fairly quickly. But it could have been, you know, much more complex. But look, I had you reading and talking about material you needed to know. You could have done exercises that went with different ones. And this can go over a couple of days. There's some on the, uh, the website where they've got those students working over multiple days to solve all of the problems to get in there. Okay. So there, are, there's an entire like box with all the questions over a certain standard or a certain objective. It's or? just ones different teachers have put together, okay. and depending on what they have, some of them will include here's the standards and here's why I did it. Some of them are strictly for fun. Okay. But if you go to breakout, it's it's breakoutedu.com, and um, you explore, and then. It's amazing what some of these teachers have done. It's just phenomenal. And um, how many boxes did you have made? Fifty. Wow. Yeah. So I take that. I have some permanently out at the elementary school. Mm -hmm. Then I have a set for teachers. And then one of the reasons I had so many made was we were going to do a professional development, and we still have it in, as a thought. And the teachers were going to walk away with a set of boxes. Oh, wow. Okay, we're going to have a drawing, and one group was going to walk away with the same boxes. Okay? So if you ever want to, you know, if you need any feedback, ever interested in this, just like Andrew did with me, I called him and talked about a few things. You know, 
There, you, you can use fluorescent pens and do hidden ink, which I did with the teachers in the PD, and they just got the biggest kick out of that. You can have them watch videos. My next one that I want to do is, what are those codes that y'all did with QR your QR code? QR code, where you have to go out and you have to find something and do that. That would be a really cool thing to include in it. Um, so my thought is, is we've got um, early college high school kids, and they, their school year and our school year is different, so we've got them in the gym now and they're not doing anything. And so one of the counselors said, can you help me come up with an activity? And we're going to do a scavenger hunt around campus where they have to go find the... What is it? QR, QR, code. Uh -huh. QR codes, mm -hmm. and then solve and come back to the gym, and that'll keep them busy for an hour, okay, yeah. so and, and do learning things. How did you go? How did you guys do the? Is that was that burned in? What is laser. It? Yeah. They have a laser thing. Oh, they up do. There. Yeah, up there at the prison. prison. <laughs> yeah, and so they set up. Well, because that's one of the they it's teach trade. those trade. It's, it's trade. Of we have a, it's a vocational program. They learn plumbing. They learn electrician, and they learn this, and they make some. They made, I should have brought mine, they made me a beautiful pen when I went up there to talk to them about the first thing. And um, they had, they made this pen out of wood and put all the guts in it and then they laser in, inscribed my name on it. It was, oh, it was very touching and it was really awesome. And they build picnic tables and chairs and, you, you know, they'll build a picnic table that would cost you four or five hundred dollars and you can get it for cost, you know, 40 bucks if you drive up there and get it. We've got a barbecue pit. My husband used to teach it.